think she needs to pass it on to her office. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That, there's no meeting in December, but on January the 30th should be a good one as Alistair Butler from Groening it will be talking about the records going online. The Women's Institute Craft Fair tomorrow in the Braid, all day and all proceeds are going to charity. This is another piece <coughs> of from this mirror, uh, hidden gems and forgotten people. There's leaflets here, please come and take one if you're interested. Now, Thank you. Boyd Gray. Boyd has been researching family history for the past 14 years and he has done most of his genealogy on the internet. He will now guide us through using internet sites to do research and it will cost virtually nothing. Oh, Ronnie, you're so lucky. Especially for Ronnie's not. Yes. It's hands over long and dry. So, over to you, boy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ronnie. Good evening. Um, I'll meet it here eventually with the benefit of the satellite navigation, without which I would never have found this place, but it's a beautiful building, isn't it? But I'm up here at a very intense building. Um, it took me an hour and three quarters to get in here as well, but uh, an hour and three quarters to get home, so I haven't been much to eat, but I've been up to bed for the evening already. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Are you going to start stopping? Oh, so we... <laughs> This actually is the picture of Ted is starting with, but this actually is my uh, own Facebook page. Because you know as well as having your personal page on Facebook, which a lot of people write an awful lot of rubbish on, and my sister tends to write things like, good morning, or off to bed now. You know, it can be incredibly boring a lot of the stuff that's on Facebook, but also it can be very, very useful, especially for genealogists, because Facebook is in some ways taking over another system that is referred to as the lists. I don't know if you've ever heard them or not, but there are, are lists for every county with um, genealogical information on them and help and advice on them. I'll talk about them again later on. They tend to be being elbowed out by Facebook because Facebook can it gives pictures, it's visual, it's full of lots and lots of lovely pictures. So for example, uh, this uh, picture here is myself, the handsome one in the hat and the middle there, and any cork dangling from, that's me showing some people. Uh, from, it's usually Americans actually I'm showing them, because I do research for other people as well. And it's usually people come over from American, find their ancestry, and I take them to where their ancestors were born, and where they're buried, is usually where I go to. Uh, in this case, it's actually an Englishman, David Buchanan here, uh, whose uh, grandfather and great-grandfather were the ministers of um, the uh, Presbyterian Church in the Warsaw. I'm trying to remember the name, but it's the one in the Warsaw called Presbyterian Church there. No. Derry? No. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Glenn Derry. Glenn Derry. That's the reason. Um, so, just as I say, lots and lots of useful information um, on the one that had a lot of delay at the front. One. So, let me get rid of that. Any of them, then, it's just a wee bit dark. Um, we'll just, anyone um, that comes on. Family trees will be talking about as well. Can I get in the way for some people? I'm going to be standing here using this. Let's see how it goes. <clears throat> on the, uh, in, in the, the little packs that Mary has very kindly done for you there is a lot of the information that I'll be using tonight. Uh, one of them is called Links, and it's got a lot of blue writing on it because uh, though that blue writing is actually live links to the internet. That means that instead of using it on a piece of paper here, if you put it onto your computer, this document onto your computer, because Mary is sending it to you by email, 
and you go to that page, do that document, and you click on those links, it'll take you straight to the pages on the internet where you can do all of the research that you need to do on the internet. So that's, that's one very useful document which will be there. If you have a memory stick with you and you want to take it away now, that's actually it there on my granddaughter's nose. And so there, so we can very easily copy from there onto a memory stick, just drag and drop it onto the memory stick. But let me make a start. Okay. Um, apparently, I've got two hours, is that right? So I hope you're all sitting very comfortably. You're well watered, both directions, so that you don't need to come and go. Um, are we having a break in the middle area or not? Don't know. Depends. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. If we feel like a break in the middle, we will do. But I'm here for two hours, but most of that time, what I want to do is to convince you that if you're not already using the internet for your genealogical research, you are missing out big time because. Uh, I believe confidently, yes? Excuse me, the photographer's here, everybody. Photographer? <laughs> <laughs> Who's he want to photograph? You. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think? <laughs> what does he want to do? Does he want to do it? Pose or lie or what? Hi. He can't wait to take it. He's not that innocent in your own a lot of appointments, a lot of appointments. Have here and I'm here. Nice to meet you. Right. Here. Come here, Miss Davis. Everybody in the back is smiling. Oh, I'm here. Correspond. 
<coughs> we use the Griffiths valuation, you can tell the exact spot on the ground where your people were living and probably born. There was no hospitals there. That's probably where they were born. So, um, gosh, I'm not supposed to talk about this stuff. I'm doing it wrong again. Anyway, but once I start, I can't stop. Um, I hope to be able to convince you that uh, if you're not using the internet, you really ought to be using it because there's so much useful information on there. Um, and at the end of the night, maybe some of you will agree with me. Um, and if you're not very adept at using the internet, well, the only way anybody becomes good at using the internet is by having something to do on the internet. If you get nothing to do on what is not, if you're not pull back to it all the time, but if you want to research your ancestry, it is all there, the majority of it's there, so bit by bit you will learn how to use the internet properly, and not just the internet, but use the computers as well, because I'm going to show you about recording information, you were talking about family trees earlier on, and I'll show you the importance of recording all of your information, and the rapidity with which you can record your information on a family tree from the internet, copy and paste, seconds, it's done, easy. And um, well, I suppose you're not supposed to break them all out, copy them from something onto the other. <coughs> so I hope you've ever mentioned that. But before I get on to the internet bit, one highlight too, as well, I want to mention is I took it off at Roots Ireland because a lot of people will criticise Roots Ireland rather foolishly, I think. On the internet, you see quite a lot of criticisms of Roots Ireland on there saying, oh, I spent £30 on there and I didn't get anything. Well, it's because you weren't doing it properly. If you use Roots Ireland properly, you never spend a penny really, other than for a certificate that is yours, if you use it properly. Not only that, better still, you can get vast amounts of free information from Roots Ireland. I'm glad um, uh, William isn't here tonight, not only because I'd be very nervous speaking in front of a real team, but also because William has connections to the people who put the data onto Roots Ireland. And I'm not sure if the people in Roots Ireland know how much information you can get out of Roots Ireland. For example, if you don't know the maiden name of a uh, woman that you find in the census, maybe your great grandma, you don't know her maiden name, it's in Roots Ireland, you get it dead easy. You don't know how many children they have, your great great grandparents. Roots Ireland will give you all the information for free. Well, all that were registered. If you didn't register them, you can't be of a magic wand and pull it out from nowhere. But you can get those children who were born to that couple for free on which they are not going to pay. I'm going to show you how to do it. <laughs> not only am I going to show you how to do it, I've given you two documents there in that pack that show you how to do it. It's not a very detailed one, but very, very wordy. And then another one um, which shows you to do step by step with one particular family. <clears throat> but before I get on to any of that, I, since I've got a captive audience, I must insist on boring you with a little bit of my own family history. But, <clears throat> to make a few general points about researching family history, not just me droning on about my own particular family history, it, it will have a purpose. <clears throat> so I'll start with this then. Um, and here we have a lovely photograph of my great-grandfather, William Gray, my great-grandmother, Annie Brewster, my great-aunt, their daughter, uh, Tilly Gray, and I'm trying to think what to call her actually because this must be before, uh, I think it was died in 1947, so it must be before 1947. She didn't marry Tilly, their daughter, until after 1947. Why? Because the man she'd been going out with for a long time was a Catholic. She had to wait until her parents died before she wanted them. So as you can see, she was long past childbirth, very age. So that's a bit sad. I didn't know that at the time. And they used to come, George, Uncle George, and I called them. Lovely people when they came and visited me. And this other one is the main character that I've been in here, a lady called Alice McShane. <coughs> at least that's what I thought she was called. But she was here in a minute, she wasn't called that at all. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I had a bit of a cold there earlier, so I'm a bit of, <coughs> look, clogged up here sometimes. The name Boy Gray has always been a nuisance. Um, <coughs> whenever I answer the telephone and I say, hello, this is Boy Gray, people always say, hello, Mr. Boyd. No, not Mr. Boyd. No, or, hello, Mr. Boyd Gray, hyphenated. No, not Mr. Boyd Gray. Whenever I cross the border into, I live in Lifford now, near a right? Whenever I cross over the border, uh, 
least here in Ballymena and Ballymon where I was born, you're fairly used to having a surname as a Christian name, so it's not that I've gone across over the border into the Republic of Ireland, they can't get it at all. So um, I was ill in 2005 and I had, uh, had a series of appointments down in the hospital and they had a big, big sheaf of notes on me and the name on the front and they always got it wrong. Mr Boyd! William Boyd! William Boyd! My wife, actually, my wife got more annoyed than me. It's Mr Gray! She's a nurse as well, it seems she didn't like them getting it wrong. <coughs> so one time I... <coughs> Told the doctor about this, and he got the boot, the cover off. He pulled it off. He told him this, and he wrote the name on it again um, properly. Next time I went down, she came out. She looked at it. She looked around. She says, "Is Gary Boyd here?" She <laughs> 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 went with a certain name first, Gary Boyd. Right, oh dear. I mean, it used to only me the name, so I, that's why I started doing genealogy um, to find out. Fourteen years ago, about um, 1999, still in England, living in England at the time. <clears throat> I wanted to find out where the name came from, the boy name. Now I had a fair idea that you know, it was a uh, somebody's maiden name, a, a, an answer, a female answer's maiden name. So I asked my mother, I had asked my mother, she died in 1885, I had asked my mother where it came from, and she says, well, when you were born in the root hospital in Balamone in 19... Wrong side of 1960, right? <laughs> when you were in the root hospital in Balamone in the 1950s, your father's aunt came into the hospital and said, um, would we put Boyd into the name? And I'm sure enough he agreed, we put Boyd into the name, we're going to call you William John Boyd. So William Boyd, John Boyd, Gray is my name, that's why I end up being called William Boyd, because William's the first name as well. It's not me. Boyd isn't even my first name, it's the third one. <coughs> so they put it into the name, but if my mother was ever told uh, by Alice McShane, her there, if my mother was ever told by Alice McShane why Boyd was to be uh, put into the name, or why she wanted to go in the name, my mother forgot. She hadn't put it really. Um, <clears throat> so it took quite a bit of research, and to cut a long story short, because it would be here forever, old age pension census returns. You know the old age pension census returns, right? Now there, well, there is an index to them online. The Masterson Index is online to them. Not easy to find, but. It was, for those of you that don't know, whenever you wanted to get the pension in 19, after 1909, it was introduced on the 1st of January 1909, if you wanted to get the pension you had to prove you were over 70. In order to do that, because nobody had birth certificates in the end, very few people could read and write, people who were 70 couldn't read and write, most of them, look at the, you can see it for yourselves whenever you look at the censuses. <coughs> so to prove that you were 70, you had to send off uh, to Dublin and ask them to look at the census and see if you were in the census of 1841 or 1851, depending on what age you were. Um, and you had to give your details of your parents' name and where they thought the town land was. And all of those letters are stored up in a lovely place, the Public Records Office in Northern Ireland, in Belfast, in uh, great big folders, and you can go and look at them there. The good folks, the Mormons, have uh, filmed them all. So they're also on microfilm uh, from the Mormons in Salt Lake City. Now, that's not on the internet, but you can look up the index to their vast catalogue of three million microfilms or whatever it is, and order those microfilms of the old age pension census returns to your nearest family history centre. There's one in Derry, I don't know if there's one in Balmain or not, is there? Family history centre? No. Belfast. Oh, that's the nearest one. Okay. Um, so, that's where I got found where the name came from, because <coughs> this woman here, Annie Brewster's um, brother, called John Brewster, had requested uh, that he, that they show that he was 70, so they sent off to Dublin, uh, somebody wrote off to Dublin for him, and the letter was recorded, and he said, my father is Robert Brewster, and I already knew that, that my uh, great-great-grandfather was called Robert Brewster, but I didn't know what his wife was called at all. It's always harder to find women. You know, women, there is no robbery or whatever. It's always harder to research women. So I had a clue what her name was. But John Brewster, my grandmother's brother, had said, um, I should, you should find me in the 1851 census. I'll be about four, I think, in the 1851 census. In Dromore, in the parish of Macosquin. My father was Robert Brewster, and my mother was... Now, he should have said Mary Brewster, because you know censuses don't give women's maiden names on them, do they? So he should have said Mary Brewster. He says, my mother was Mary Boyd. Right. So it took me four years to find that, and that's the only uh, evidence I've ever found of it, but she was my great great grandmother, Mary Boyd. In other words, she was this woman's grandmother. 
And I said to her, I knew it was Alice McShane. Well, obviously she's my grandfather's sister, so she was Alice Gray before she got married. But she wasn't Alice Gray. Whenever I did the research on her and found her birth, her name was Mary Boyd Gray. Don't know where the Alice came from. She's christened Mary Boyd Gray. So she wanted the name to continue because not only was it her grandmother's name, but it was her name as well. <coughs> I have an aunt who is 94 now, and I said to her, her name's Moira. I said, Aunt Moira, she's in England, I was on the phone to her. I said, Aunt Moira, um, why is there no uh, boy in your generation? Because this will be the next generation, this is my father's sister. And she says, What do you mean? And I said, Well, you know, I'm going through the thing about Mary Boyd, but I says, But there's, there's no Mary Boyd in your generation. She says, What are you talking about? Sure, my name's Mary Boyd, it's not Moira at all. <laughs> <laughs> why do people do this? <laughs> I mess about with their names all the time. So, Include this bit of the story. I consider myself, I don't complain about being called Boy Gray anymore, because I consider myself lucky that I'm only called Boy Gray and not Mary Boy Gray. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> that's why I started doing genealogy. Um, but there are other reasons why we do genealogy. I'll pass over one very quickly because it's the least interesting and probably the most important but least interesting, and that is it becomes addictive like a jigsaw puzzle or a crossword puzzle, or a detective story. You've just got to find out the next name and all the children. You've got to find every child that somebody had. What for? I don't know. But you do. That's what becomes obsessive about it, especially on the internet. You're just looking for that extra bit of information all the time. And that's what keeps us going and going and going. And it's a pity, really, that that is the obsession, because that's not really what it's about. It's about the people. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> back here, <laughs> that is that, <laughs> my lovely wife, my aunt Sidney, uh, and my sister, oldest in the family, lived to be a hundred, died a couple of years ago, age a hundred, which is a bit encouraging for me, because I'm where is 94, aunt Sidney lived to be a hundred, my father died age 50, I've got 10 years on him now, already. Um, my mother and my grandmother. Uh, my mother, uh, her name is Gordon from the state in between Kilray and Port Adelaide. And this is Ginny McClements from the parish of Macosman again. And Ginny McClements, my grandmother, was always old, wasn't she? Right? She was always stooped over, wee foxy face, always lots of wrinkles. She was always old, wasn't she? That's how I always remember. She was always old. And, and, the other grandmother, I don't remember at all, she died in 57. Ginny McClemens was always a woman, wasn't she? Of course she wasn't. And she's beautiful. Right? Doesn't she look like Ginny McClemens? About 100 years ago, whenever she was in her 20s, her early 20s. Um, <coughs> a beautiful woman. And that's what we tend to forget, is that our grandparents had lives too. In fact, our parents had lives too. I keep telling my children this. And, you know, we had a life too. We, we did things as well. We didn't invent <laughs> all the things they think they invented. <laughs> but so did our grandparents. They had lives, they had interesting lives. And that's the fascination of genealogy. To me, is to find out about how our ancestors lived. That's why I'm in it. And I'm sure that's the fascination for most of you as well is to see how they live. I'm conscious of time here, I can spend an awful lot more talking about what I did learn about my grandmother. I shan't say too much about it, other than it wasn't the story my mother told me. Once I began to research it properly, my mother did not get on well with her mother-in-law, and she blamed her mother-in-law for making my grandfather go bankrupt. He was a, a film contractor in Garva. Uh, and my mother-in-law used to say, oh, she loved the fashions and she was always buying big hats and she spent all his money and he had to put a notice in the paper saying that he wasn't going to be responsible for her debts. <laughs> she, she doesn't like her mother-in-law. So when I researched it, my grandfather was no way into either. You know. <laughs> anyway. I take it you got that photograph there. You got it fixed, did you? No, that's the way it was. Uh, there's, not, there's a lot of fixed. I thought, I thought when my head began that 
And again, the fixing is putting it up for me. You know I should do because I use it all the time. I do like that photograph. I should get it properly fixed all the for the, the marks on her face. It's a brilliant. It is a photograph. It is. I should get it fixed your right. Because I do have a lot of photographs on the wall of my ancestors. Um, and here it is again. <coughs> the other the other grandparents, the uh, Gordons of the sleigh. <coughs> that's my mother, uh, Frances Gordon, that's Aunt Natalie, Aunt Jean, Aunt Anna, uh, Maggie Bellingham, my grandmother, and um, my grandfather, Tommy Gordon. Um, and again, I never met this woman at all. They both died in 1957. And, uh, the old, I don't remember him at all, but the only thing I remember of her is um, in her coffin. Because <laughs> they took me in, you know, this business of, I'll have to come in and see him, I'll have to come in. Touch your face, touch it. <laughs> you know that business that they do? They probably don't do it anymore, they've got more sense. But we, we certainly in our generation, we had to do that sort of thing. And she was in a wee white wedding dress that was all around her face. It's very really scary. So that's, she was always old to me as well. Never knew her as anything else. But. What's that doing there? Not the one I'm at. That's Maggie Bellman, my grandmother. It must be taken in 1909 because that's my Aunt Adeline, born in 1909. Um, and that's my grandfather, Tommy Gordon. And that photograph was taken on the rooftop of a tenement building in, um, oh, I don't remember the exact address, in Manhattan. It was 182nd Street in Manhattan. So my grandparents, in this case, you shocked me. In that transfer, what was doing in Manhattan? You know, it wasn't, wasn't even just New York, it was Manhattan they were in. The centre of New York, Twin Towers, Statue of Liberty, and all the rest of it. <coughs> what had happened was that, that although they were both from around Kilray, the Slay, and she came from Kilray itself, called more in age of Kilray, um, he emigrated, they knew each other because they both went to Kilray First Presbyterian Church, but he emigrated in 1905, she emigrated in 1908, they had the first child in 1909. My mother was born in Manhattan, it's a lot of American births, but I didn't know that when I was growing up. Born in Manhattan in 1917. <coughs> but they came back home in 1920 to inherit the family farm. He inherited the family farm. And again, when you start to research this and what was it like, what was it like to live all those times and what were your ancestors like, it turns out that he wasn't the nicest man in the world either. Uh, because we had Anna who only died last year and she, I'm very lucky to have elderly relatives, she was what, 92 or something when she died, she didn't have very good things to say about him. And you can see in this next picture, you can get an idea of why she didn't particularly like her father, Tommy Gordon. What does he look like there to you? Right? Is he a man who likes himself or is he not? Right? And he was sitting in some bar in New York. He was very proud of himself. In fact, in the previous picture, if you looked at it, I often think that he imagines himself to be one of the gangsters of New York. I can find that one again where it was there. Look at that. That's obviously a posed picture, isn't it? You look at the props. I, I provide a hand on the right shoulder of the first baby. Hopefully the next one will be a boy. I think that's being inflicted. <coughs> Two minors on either side. Both called William Bellingham, oddly enough. One is her brother, I can't remember which one, that's her brother, I think, and that's her cousin, both called William Bellingham. He's boosted, hasn't he? Look at Bell as well. He's, he's. Anyway, I'm getting away. That, that's the fascination for me of family history, is to find out the stories of your ancestors. Now, we were talking earlier on about some of that same stories that some people have in their family. I don't know any that overly fascinating, but even that in itself I find extremely interesting. And it's not just that. Specific incidents. It's I taught history for thirty years, and the, the bit that always fascinated me in history it wasn't you know, Hitler or something like that or the Cold War. It was always how people lived in the nineteenth century. So you can see it was a very easy move from me into genealogy, just learning what it was like to live one hundred and fifty years ago. So that's the fascination, really, of family history. This internet, right? I was, I was just amazed whenever I found this on the internet. <coughs> you think crossing over the Atlantic was a big deal. It wasn't. Maggie Bellingham crossed it six times. She crossed the Atlantic six times. And it's all recorded in Emerald Day. Emerald Day. Uh, Ellis Island Records. It's all recorded there on the internet. You can go and see it. You can see who she turns up with. When they're coming home again, they've got a son. Would you believe? 
but they only have four daughters. Well, they're missing one of the daughters. Well, they only have three daughters at that time, but then they get home. They're missing one of the daughters with their son called Thomas. Somebody got it wrong. I spent ages looking for this Thomas. It didn't exist. It was one of the daughters was, was accidentally named wrong. On the Ellis Island records, and as well, when you go down on the Ellis Island records, you know the ship they sailed on, they, had, they sailed and arrived, and they've even got pictures of them. And this is the uh, SS Caledonia. Beautiful ship. Yeah. I agree with that. I'm going over on that one, and my great grandfather. Uh, Caledonia. <laughs> Must have been back and forward still. <laughs> back and forward still, it wasn't a big deal. I suppose it was. People didn't really <coughs> talk about the famine times, the 1840s, maybe it was a bigger deal across the Atlantic then. Well, that, that, that gets into a different issue that I don't really want to get into now, but a lot of the Scotch-Irish people who went to America went there to look for, with positive reasons. Have you ever watched Paddy Fitzgerald? You know Paddy Fitzgerald from the Ulster American Folk Museum who does immigration studies and he explains why people went to America. And he says that was the difference. The Irish went to America uh, because they were driven out of Ireland. Um, they didn't want to go to America because all they could do, especially at the time of the famine, was the uh, Ulster Scots have been going from much earlier, 1718 was when they started going, not 1845. And the reason they went is because <coughs> they were ambitious for a better day. So, backwards and forwards are constantly in the um, Picture, photograph taken in Manhattan, studio photograph was, there's me, uh, and which one's which? That's that gene, that's that, that gene there, and there's my grandmother there, with some people called Bamford. To search through the Danfords, wherever they owned, they were from Kilray and they owned a studio, uh, a photographic studio in Manhattan. That's why they got the photograph taken there. Um, and that's my brother, Jim Gray. And when you start to do all the research on the internet, you still want to go and see the places where they're born. And whenever we went down there, I knew that there was an elderly man living there who would be our fourth cousin called Jim Gray. And I went to the door, knocked on the door, met Jim Gray. And uh, Jim Gray, the other Jim Gray, my brother Jim Gray, uh, that's the other Jim Gray, who would be our fourth cousin. He was able to confirm for me something that I could never get properly right. It would take too long to explain it now, but again, there was a mistake in the records. And he says, No, no, he says, My what was a great grandfather and your great grandfather were brothers, your great grandfathers were brothers. He knows that, so he remembers the comment about it. So it's not all on the internet. <clears throat> Yeah, this is just whenever uh, uh, people come over from America and I show them where their ancestors come from. These people are actually, I think they there, it's called Jana Raka, and I researched her cousins <coughs> from uh, just outside Liverpool actually, and was able to take her to the exact spot where her ancestors would have been born because all the Griffiths valuation has those maps there. And it was a lovely old ruined house. It wasn't even a cottage, they were quite wealthy farmers. It was a big two story ruined house, all on the internet. I have a photograph. <clears throat> um, long before my Gordon grandparents went to America, my grey, oh, well, I can't remember now, we probably fellow great grandparents went to America as well. I was able to follow them going to America. Two brothers married two sisters. One couple married before they went out, the other couple went out, met each other out there from the same time and then married out there. And I was able to follow on the internet, using American records. I say I was able to follow, just make it quicker, but really I must admit I have a partner, a genealogy partner, uh, in America who works with me and does an awful lot of research in America and she's the expert in American records is absolutely brilliant. <coughs> Just using all sorts of things in the internet. She's able to reach you and now we're able to follow these people all the way down to the current generation. And one thing we found was that this would have been my father's third cousin, uh, age 20, his name is Lloyd Gray, Lloyd Gray, age 20, was flying B-29s over Germany, dropping bombs on Germany, and he kept a diary of it. He said, I've been very sad about this because that looks like my hometown that I'm dropping these bombs on. And his diaries were put into a uh, museum and are available along with a lot of photographs that he had as well. <coughs> he obviously is dead now, but his son, Lloyd Gray Jr., was born the same year as me, right? 50-something, born the same year as me, um, he was a, 
a professor of um, medicine, sort of a medicine professor in the University of Charlottesville, and uh, the address was there. I rang up the university and said, could I speak to Roy Gray? Oh, he's retired. When did he retire? Two years ago. I've never been able to find him yet. But I know the information is on there if I could just get the time to be able to follow the American, you know, uh, the current American directories. So the information you can find is absolutely amazing. Right, that's my own little bit of family history that I, I wanted to bore you with, but also to make some points that might be useful as of the internet. You ever see this photograph? This picture has been on the internet in various places. We if you're talking to English people, they always say, oh, I can trace my ancestor back 20 generations to William the Conqueror. <laughs> or if you ever watch who do you uh, think you are, you can always go back many, many generations and you're sitting there thinking, oh, I couldn't go back that far, I'm with the records. I'm not sure they actually can either, to be honest. I think the BBC only shows you the ones that they have success with. Um, but never despair, because although you can't go back very, very far in researching your ancestry, about 1770, Somebody born in 1770 is about as far back as you're going to get uh, for your ancestry here, unless you're extremely lucky. Uh, somebody happens to be, I don't know, related to low royalty or something like that. 1770 is about as far back as you get with any certainty. But you don't have to worry if you're interested in genealogy, you don't have to worry about going back the Grey family line all the way, or indeed even the Gordon family line, uh, because you have what, two parents. Four grandparents, eight great grandparents, sixteen great greats, thirty-two travel greats, sixty-four quadruple greats, and that's they were born in about seventeen seventy if you're my age. Your quadruple great grandparents were born in about seventeen seventy. There's sixty-four of them. So that'll keep you busy for a while, won't it? <laughs> you know the only name that I've discovered so far that repeats, uh, the only surname that repeats in my ancestry. Guess what it is? Boy. It is. <laughs> boy is the only name that repeats. I'm called after a boy. My great great grandmother on the grey side was a boy. Well, over and way over my mother's side. In fact, it's the mother, 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 mother. You know, that side, the mother's all the way up. Were boys as well. There's only name that repeats in that coincidence, too. Now, incidentally, it's the only people that I have in Antrim. It's called Balf Betty in the parish of. I've forgotten. What's the parish? We you know where the vow is. Mm -hmm. Across the river from Kiray. What parish is that in? Yeah, I haven't done it for a long time now. It's not Fen Boy. It is Fen It is Fen Boy, yeah. <coughs> so, there we go. Now, let me collect my thoughts a moment here to see what I wanted to do next. <coughs> Backwards from there. Um, I'm using right. <coughs> you all see that coming. Big enough. Ah, big enough. <coughs> you know, there's there's no real mystery about researching your ancestry in terms of uh, all sorts of weird and wonderful documents or sources of information. There actually really only are very limited number of sources of information where you're going to get the vast majority of the information that's available to you. This is them here, I think anyway. <coughs> you have the two censuses, 1901, 1911 and 1901. And for people living in Ireland, that's the starting point. I teach these, the genealogy classes as well, 8 or 10 genealogy classes, so I'm helping people to find their own family history. And that's what I say to them here in Ireland, I say, that's the starting point. You need to know who your grandparents uh, were, so the same age as me, your grandparents should be in the 1901-1911 census. You need to know their names, and that's the first thing I ask them to do. And if I ask here, I wonder what reaction we get as well. How many of you, you should all know because you're interested in genealogy, but how many of you uh, know your grandmother's maiden names? You should all do really here, shouldn't you? Yeah. But if you ask that in a normal audience, you will find only about half the people know the maiden name of their grandparents, their grandmothers. You know this here. This is just a, a, an excuse to show off my two beautiful granddaughters. Oh, incidentally, this one here, the oldest of my granddaughters, um, I, I call my son, um, 
Samuel Boyd Gray. And when he had his first daughter, he called her Sophie Alexandra Boyd Gray. This is the age of Boyd Gray as well. That's six generations of Boyds now. Um, and another one, I was just, just back from England visiting a third granddaughter I've got, and she's only four weeks old, and a lovely video of me and me on the internet, cuddling her and nursing her as well. She won't know me. She probably won't remember me at all. Isn't that sad? She probably, or if she knows, it'll be like that old, the <laughs> with a grey hair, the grey obsession, funny Irish accent, because they're all English. They're all English these people. So, um, when was that? Um, here, here. That's right. What sources are available to you? The starting point is to find your <coughs> ancestors, your grandparents, four of them, in the 1901 census. You need to know their names and you need to know the town and they were from. That has to be the starting point. And you really ought to be able to find that out here. For Americans, who, uh, or Australians, people who have emigrated in the last hundred years, the first question you want to ask them is, what was the name of your ancestor who emigrated? Do you know his father's name? When did they emigrate? And I'll tell you what, it was before 1840. I, I probably wouldn't bother researching it because I wouldn't be able to find them. They also would need to know at least the parish, preferably the townland. And if they know those things, you know, they know who was left behind, they know the townland, psh, into the drift's valuation of the mid 1850s, 1840, 1864, you ought to be able to find them. Not only ought you be able to find them, but you'll find out exactly where they lived on the internet without leaving your front room. One time there was a man who visited the Maria Heritage Centre in Donegal that ran the board of, celebrates the links between uh, Ulster Presbyterianism and American Presbyterianism. Um, and this man turned up at the Maria Heritage Centre and the manager rang me and he said, um, give me the details of who he was, if his name was Rankin, look for Rankins from uh, outside uh, Zion Mills. <coughs> and it's about 20 minutes from when we heard the centre to me, I said, send them out to me. By the time he got to me, I found his ancestors. There they were, the Griffiths Foundation. Well, he thought that, you know, we had the magic wand and conjured these people out of nowhere. You know, you know what you're doing? It's all on the internet. It's easy enough to do. I was able to drive them straight to where his ancestors were born. It's on my Facebook page, Dragons on there, and to the grave because as well as that, for some reason all there was photographs of the graveyard with his, I think it was his quadruple great grandfather buried there. Way back one of the 1770s or something. <coughs> the sources you will be using are those two, the Rex Valuation, and then to connect them up, to find the people who are here and what were they, this one their grandparents that are in here, isn't it? 30 years per generation, so 1901, 1850, so it'll be their grandparents who are probably in here. In order to know exactly who the people you're finding in here and how they're related to them. you still following me? How the people who are in here, how they're related to the people who are here. The only way to do it really is BMDs, births, marriages and deaths, civil births, marriages and deaths, or church, baptisms, marriages and burials. On the internet, um, civil first marriages and deaths are on the internet, almost all of them, although there's mistakes in any of the databases you use, but generally, Roots Ireland has most of them. Family Search, the Mormon website, doesn't have the certificates, but it has the entire index to first marriages and deaths, which is very, very important because if you can't find it in Roots Ireland, you need the details from Family Search of the registration district and uh, the volume and page number that's on the index. <coughs> and if you send that off to either, well, you can send it to Belfast and ask the uh, people at the General Registry Office to send you the certificate if you particularly want to pay. Is it £12? £15. If you want to pay it, £15. <coughs> or if you want to send it to Ross Common Republic of Ireland, it costs you €4. Euros. Three parts. All right. So, family search. The Mormon website is very, very important. Even though it's only the index, it doesn't have the certificates themselves on there. It's very important because it gives you those essential details. Because if you have to send it off common and you don't know the volume of page number in the registration district on the year, obviously, um, they will charge you. Oh, no, well, actually, it's only two extra two euros, but they will charge you more uh, for doing a 
they search. On the third website that has birth, simple birth marriages and deaths is Emerald Ancestors. So all three of those, you can find birth marriages and deaths. So church records, as I said earlier on, is a big bit that's missing. We haven't as yet got um, all of the church records or anywhere like all of the church records online. And it'll be an awful long time before we do. Um, because there's just so many of them and they're in all sorts of disparate places. They're lying in drawers in um, churches at the back of safes getting moldy and damp. Or they are in somebody's house or they're lost altogether because somebody passed them on somebody else with the fucking they gave them to. Or if you're lucky they have been microphoned and are in chromium. I'm going to come back to that. There's a huge point to be made about that. Um, but in the 1980s and 90s, I think it was, and I don't know the entire details of this, but a project was set up whereby a lot of people went out to all of the church record, church churches, and it's at least in Ulster, it may be further down in Ireland, I'm not really sure, but maybe some people know more about it than I do, <coughs> and said to them, if you give us your registers, we take them away for you and we put them on the computer. Now this is the 80s and 90s, whenever a computer printouts where you know those big green things with lines on and the holes down the side, you remember that? Right? Mm -hmm. So <coughs> that was the printout that they gave back to the churches, along well, the records obviously. They get a copy of it and they sell those records, that's what they make money out of. I don't know if they told the churches afterwards this. But it's very, very useful if you go to those churches and the uh, minister or priest hands you that uh, Talk to me, you think to yourself, no, I don't I want to see the original because it might be a bit transcribed. And anyway, it's nice to see the original, to see your, you know, your parents' names there. And you'll also see other names of people born at the same time that you didn't realise were related to you. So <coughs> it's you know, nice to see the originals, but that, uh, it comes in it, which you an orange cover on it, and you open it up, it's all done alphabetically. So you can go through it in you know, a few minutes and you can find if your people are in that church or not. So the point is, somebody's already done this. At some point, they've done a lot of the churches and they've put a lot of the church records onto computers. And those church records that are on computers now, I assume, are the ones that Roots Ireland is selling. Well, where did they get, where did they get them from? Those got them from somewhere. I presume that's where they got them from. I know there's a chap called Brian Mitchell, uh, a well-known genealogist uh, from Derry, the city of Derry. And I think he did a lot of the work in Derry and Donegal. And I think he either owns or believes he owns that database and, and somewhere other the routes Ireland has it. There must be some sort of deal between them. I don't know how. I don't really care. The point is, <coughs> there are a lot of church records already online in places like Roots Ireland. And you're very foolish you don't use it. Because this comes back to it again. How long is it going to take you to find your ancestors in church records? If you don't know, like I did, that mine precisely lived in, they were always in McCosman Presbyterian Church, or they were always in First and Ray Presbyterian Church. If you're lucky enough to know that, then it's relatively easy. But if you're not sure which church they went to, well, you have to go to all the Presbyterian churches, uh, maybe even the Church of Ireland churches, because don't forget before 1850, an awful lot of Catholic and Presbyterian records were recorded in Church of Ireland churches as they were supposed to be, by law. That's what they were supposed to be. Um, <coughs> it takes you ages to, to go up to Coney and start searching through all those microphones. And anyway, you then have to start going through the microphone. And you know how hard microphones are to read? Some of them are appalling. Or better, somebody else has done it for you in advance. But yes, I know they could have made mistakes, so you can't. Uh, if you find people that are yours, you're lucky. If you don't find them, it may be because they didn't recognize it or mistranscribed it. Um, <coughs> That's all very well, having a church record, even if you know it's McCoskill Presbyterian Church, right? Because um, oh, I could go up to Belfast every tournament, couldn't I? I could travel from Donegal to Belfast every day and see McCoskill, no I can't. I could buy it. Well actually I did buy it back in about 2001, 2002. The microphone, I bought a copy of the microphone from McCoskill Presbyterian Church and I have my own copy of that microphone, but well, they stopped doing that. They can't buy it anymore. 
And even if I did want to look at that microphone, I still have to take it to the Japan Library to look at it all the time. Because you do need to keep going back to the church to look again and again and again. Because you can't just go and copy out all the grades. Remember, half of those grades are called women. Right? They marry people who weren't called grey. And you need to therefore go back to all of those other different names and look for those other different names. Because those cousins of yours, cousins of very common, are just as much cousins as the greys are, or the Gordons. So you need to keep going back and back and back again and again and again. You can't do it to a church microphone. You can't go up to Belfast, even if you have your own, and just for bad every turn about now. Go to them and go to Roots and put the name and take the one. Fraction of a second. They're all there. All, all the Tommy Gordons that were born roughly 1888 are there in County Derry, or better still, uh, around Kilrae. They're all there. You do it. Microseconds. That's the beauty of the internet. That's why I'm saying that if you're not using the internet, you really should be because there's so much information on the internet now. Not only that, it can be accessed in seconds. Not only that, it can be accessed when you want to access it. I was saying earlier on to some people, I found myself going up to, to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, the mic won't have me in the bed, and the work will come up after 2 o'clock in the morning. I always say, there, right, what am I should do? I'm not going to have to do it, but she's accused it. And I'm retired, so I can stay in bed by late the next day. Um, I found myself going up to bed before 2 o'clock, and I thought, oh, I never thought of trying that. I don't <laughs> 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 another look. Because you can just do it there and then, but it suits you. So, you really ought to be using the internet if you're not. I haven't finished here. I was saying at the beginning that there are not that many sources of information. There's the two senses, there's the first valuation, there's first marriages and deaths, both church and civil. There's the first valuation of revision books which have now been put online for Northern Ireland and are extremely useful at a game for connecting up this and this. If you find the name of your people here and you don't find the name, you're thinking, where did they go along the way? Well, you can follow them from the British Valuation to the British Valuation Revision books, follow that particular uh, plot of land, plot 2B in Bellock Betty or wherever, until and whatever date, because they're all dated, it passes to somebody else. Do you know what I discovered? That uh, my boys in Belf Betty, where did they, they disappeared because they went there by 1901 and 18 then. Where did the farm go? It went to me, Thomas Bellingham, my great grandfather. So he inherited the land, that's where it went from the voice of the Bellinghams. Um, and I only found that out whenever it went through the British Friday Race Revision, which I wouldn't have a clue. Otherwise, I think that he sold it, I didn't pass out of the family. So, British Foundation Vision books have been put online for Northern Ireland. They're extremely useful. Absolutely brilliant. Haven't done it for the Republic of Ireland yet, you know, I do not have it at all. Uh, but what they have done for the Republic of Ireland is the other big thing is it's not on there at all, or is it a little page? Is it on yours? <laughs> the Tide of Dogman books, yeah, I'm there. Tide of Dogman books. I certainly like the British Foundation, but only the British Foundation, which what well, must have about 95% of the heads of households in Ireland on it. You know, it's pretty comprehensive. You can rely on it pretty well as long as you're a head of household, not living with your brother or something like that. You can show up or haven't got married by that stage, you can show up. Um, <coughs> the type of bottom books is about what, six, 60, two thirds or 70% of the heads of household. So it's, it's quite useful too. Uh, it's very useful, it's worth having, especially as it dates back to. Uh, about 1830, sometimes the 18, mid 1820s. And if you find somebody in there who is, you know, seventy, elderly, dies very shortly afterwards, I don't know how you would know they die, but, but you know, it, 1830 is very early. Um, the Republic of Ireland does have that online. Uh, it's not online in Northern Ireland, but it's a pretty small, you know, it's not a very big database, so I suspect it will have it online uh, in Northern Ireland very soon. But apart from those sources, so a lot more. Okay, Wells, so I'm here down here at the bottom, so I've read the names of your search for company sources, and there are a few others like Wells, but you know, many of us have actually got ancestors who were rich enough to leave anything in a will. Well, most of my ancestors were farm laborers or very small farmers, and they didn't really leave a will, or else they were like Tommy Gordon. Remember Tommy Gordon? Sitting in, in Manhattan, 
They uh, Irish gangster of New York. Four daughters live in the state. One of them, and everybody who lives in the state is called Gordon. All the farm owners in the state are called Gordon. <laughs> Maybe some of you know the state. I know a number of Gordon from the state. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Tommy Gordon, my grandfather, decided that it was very important that the Gordon name continue in the sleigh. So he sold his farm very, very cheaply to a man who was no relation to him whatsoever, called Gordon, and his four daughters didn't get any of it. He fought the will, but he didn't get it. He got that. So, have I made the point about how, you know, there's not many more sources. You tell me what else have we got? Old age pension, census returns, uh, nothing very big is there other than those. Those are the big ones. They're the ones that put them away now. They're the ones that you'll keep coming back to again and again and again. It'll be <coughs> censuses, purpose valuation, birth marriage and deaths, connecting them up over and over again. That's what you'll be doing mainly. And whenever I go and help people in their classes, I sit down beside them, first thing you do is the census. <clears throat> then you find them in the group's valuation, and then you find them by the um, first marriage of deaths and roots Ireland in order to connect to them. And it's just amazing the progress you can make you know, with people's ancestry in a couple of hours. If you know how to do it, you know what you're doing. And that's what I'm here for, is not to say I'm the big know-all, but to try and pass on the information to other people, which is why I've also got, I'll show you later on when I get to the links page, I've got a genealogy guide on the internet to show you how to do these things and better still I've now got 10 YouTube videos of about 10 or 15 minutes each uh, showing you how to do various aspects of it so if you're thinking God I'm never going to remember all the things he's saying now I've tried to put it on the internet as well and the link to those things is on that links document that you have in front of you um, in fact that's what I'm coming to now Right. Why don't I take a seat a little bit? Probably not. Money stick. Keep yourself sat down. Okay. That's very That'll take a big seat past my head. Right. <coughs> People who don't use them. Computer very much. This will look like magic to anybody who is used to using a computer. It's very, very basic. <coughs> All those blue things are live links. They're live on Earth, whatever you want to call it. And if you click on them, it'll take you exactly to where you need to go. Clearly, you can't click on them. There's a piece of paper in front of you, so therefore you need to have it on a computer, and that's why Various sent you by email a copy of this document that you download onto your computer, and you can do what I can, I'm going to do now. Or you can take it from me before you leave if you've got a memory stick. Um, <coughs> I've tried to put them in the same sort of order that I had on the board a moment ago, but let me show you how to do it in the first place. You just hover the cursor over any one that you want to go to. Right, I'll bring the cursor over there, and as it says, it even tells you control click. So, you know the control button down the bottom left? Put your finger on the control button down on the bottom left of your computer, left click. Because right. it turns into a wee hand. See when you do that? It turns into a wee hand. And when you've got the wee hand, you left click on it, and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> do it again. As it did work, because I got it twice now. Okay, so that takes you straight to the censuses. Now, I'm going to do a practical example for you later on, so I'm not going to say too much about these at the minute. I'll just show you the links, but I will do a practical example with the censuses, and most important of all, through Ireland, because that's what you really want to see how to do. Um, <coughs> click one, I'm off, and move on. Back to the document again. There is the census, the two census, 1901 and 1911. The other way of getting these, by and I don't use this myself anymore, um, because the other very easy way of finding any website on the internet, and far more websites than are ever on here, is what? Google. Google. It's useful. 1901 census, Ireland, otherwise you get the UK one. 1901 census, Ireland, or 1911 census, same thing anyway. Uh, Ireland, um, Google will find it for you. Or Rufus Valuation, Google will find it for you. 
uh, almost in Crony Wells Google provided. Uh, here's a good valuation. Just let me show you the website if you're not familiar with it. Here it is. That's about Ireland. Oh, let me make a general point here while it hurts me. The um, both the 1911 census, 1901 and 1911 census, and the uh, Griffiths valuation website are not the easiest websites and best websites to use in the entire world because they are incredibly spelling sensitive. If you spell anything wrong, and by wrong I don't mean the right spelling of your ancestor's name, I mean the way somebody else spelled it whenever it was written down, you'll get nothing out of it. You won't get anything. So, and it's the same in the census. It's half and half of the roots are when it comes to it. It's not so bad. The best one of all, <coughs> which is not spelling sensitive, and will give you every combination of your name that you're looking for. Do you know which one it is? Family search. Yeah, the Mormons one. Family search is the best one. It'll give you every combination of your name. It's really lovely to use. <coughs> this one has to be very precise. Oh, and that's the general point I haven't actually made it yet. Is less is more. You see, whenever you're using, I, I know these mistakes because I watch people in classes do it all the time. Search the census, they do. You click search the census. The internet here isn't awfully past, by the way. Sometimes it times out before it ever gets to it, but it's working now. And they go through every one of these boxes, and they type in the surname, and they type in the forename, and they put the county in, and they put the town in, and then they ask me what a DED is. And when I tell them, they try and type the DED in. <coughs> How many times, many opportunities is that to make a mistake? And you make one tiny mistake and they won't find it for you. The answer is less is more. Don't put any more in here than you absolutely have to, which is usually, in most cases, the surname, the Christian name, and the county. Do that first of all, and then if it gives you too many, narrow it down by the townland. And if it's a townland that has many different spellings, I'll choose another townland that is nearby. Dromore is never spelt any other way except Dromore. So if you find if Dromore is nearby, look for Dromore and then find the DED. How did they spell the DED? And put the DED in and leave your townland out. So all you have is <coughs> surname, forename, county, DED. You have to search these things intelligently. By intelligently, I don't mean carefully. You, you have to think what you're doing. Less is more. Um, Right. What else have we got on this? There's an awful lot of these. As well as the Ask About Ireland website for the Griffiths Valuation, we used to use before it was put online by the good people down in Dublin. Um, there was another website called Falsha Rohan. You see that? What looks like uh, Falsha Rohan. It's actually Falsha Rohan. And you click on there you get a transcription of the Griffiths valuation. And like all transcriptions, it's full of inaccuracies. The parish of Rafoe apparently only had one town land in it. The rest aren't there. I don't know why. No, to point, not Rafoe, to point. Um, and actually, Rafoe was missing. Rafoe only has one town land in the title of the books because all the rest were lost. Parish of Rafoe. Um, it's, this is a transcription, so yes, it's always going to be the inaccuracies of transcriptions, but the beauty about it is Antrim, right? Give me a parish in Antrim. Anyone? Mm -hmm. What was mean in? Eh? Come on down, five down. Oh, okay, Kirk and Rail up there. Right. Can you see the immediate advantage of it? It's done alphabetically. So you can go there and see if you have got people in that uh, parish and you can see what town land they were in. There's all the town lands there. Now if you find your people, great. Oh, as the spelling. Because, you know, Steph's BD could be spelled lots of different ways. Well, there's, there's how it was spelled in the Rivers Valuation. So you can now take that spelling back to Ask About Ireland, because you know how it was spelled. You can take the spelling of, if you couldn't find it, the town lands, some of those town lands, Made a very uh, different types of spellings. You can take that 
Townlands tally was there, it is now. And you can take it back to the real Griffiths valuation, this one here, and look it up properly and get all the information. But it's not an extremely useful transcription of the Griffiths valuation, and that's been there much longer than the Ascombe Ireland website. They're all there, and that's the starting point, really. So if you see your people there, great. If you don't see them there, uh, maybe they were mistranscribed. Maybe you'd have got to go and labour further with asking about Ireland. Uh, but certainly if they're there, <coughs> the coach in, as you know, like, there's that name Dewey, who can be spelled all sorts of ways. Um, <coughs> you can take the information from there. So, another very useful website for you. That's not what I want, I want this one here. What's your rule hat? There's Roots Ireland. I'll come back to Roots Ireland because I'm going to. That's the one I really want to concentrate on. There is the Mormons family search. They've changed it again recently. They've changed it about four times in the last two years, two or three years. Uh, which gets a bit annoying, but I'll tell you what, it now works extremely well. I wonder why I'm going to do this later on for you. I, I must come back and show you how to use family search. Let me just do it now in case forget it. No. I click on family search. Come on, we'll come search, don't we all day?
and Valamina in 1800, and I reckon he was born in the 1880s. All of a sudden, we've got two of them, and I know we probably didn't have care in his name, so you know, this isn't him because it wasn't the right registration history. But there's what I was talking about earlier on name, um, registration district, Balamina, that is there, Balamina's registration district, volume and page number. That's the information you need to send the most common for it. But remember, less is more, just put the name in first of all, and then start to limit it down because if I go backwards again, I don't think I'm going to be doing this later on, so it's a good idea to get now. If you decide, well, actually, I'm not sure he was born in Balamina, but I know where he would die, or I know where he was married, I'll go back a wee bit. Um, I'll take the birth out of it all together. So you have to click, see me clicking off all the births, clicking off all of the births, because I'm not really sure where he was married, but born, and I click off the birth years as well. You have to do them laboriously one by one, click them all off, and then you go back and start looking for his marriage, marriage place, click on it, and then you can see it again. Okay? So, Put the name in and then start to limit it down to say whether you're going to look for a birth or a marriage um, or a death because that's mainly what is in your births, marriages, and deaths. But there's also wills which often come under deaths. I've put into your pack, we don't need to look at it in any great detail now, but I've put into your pack this document as well because you need to, to understand it if you are going to search successfully. Irish births, marriages, and deaths. And I divided it into civil births, marriages, and deaths beginning in 1864, except for promising marriages, which began in 1845. You didn't know this, it's here now. A birth record will contain these details. What's the most crucial detail on a birth record? Why do you want the births? What does it have that nothing else has? Mother's maiden name. That's the mother's maiden name. They're gold dust for mother's maiden names. Uh, marriage records, what have they got that you're not going to find anywhere else usually? Fathers of the bride and groom, they're both there, but not the mothers. And you see, if you try and look for mothers of the bride and groom in Roots Ireland, it will say to you, go away, I don't know those people at all. Because you've asked that stupid question. You need to know what you're looking for and what is actually there. You need to understand what is in the birth, marriage, and death. Um, and then it says where they're available from. And then there's church records uh, of baptisms, marriages, and burials. I find this point very hard to get across to people who don't know about genealogy. But when people are um, registering the births of their children in their church, Catholic, Protestant, Church Bible, whatever, Presbyterian, sometimes the clergyman will write down um, uh, Tommy and Maggie Gordon. So if I'm looking for her maiden name, will I get it? No, because he didn't write it down. Sometimes he'd write down, Tommy Gordon and Maggie Bellingham were the parents of these two. Will I find it on that occasion? Yes, I will, because it was written down. So when you're searching Roots Ireland for church records, sometimes you get the mother, and sometimes you won't. You need to understand that, you need to really understand how these records were written down in the first place before you start to interrogate databases for them. Now most of you know that, you've all seen church records, you've all seen civil births, marriage and deaths records. So think about that when you're searching the databases. Don't be asking it to do something that it either definitely can't do, like a uh, mother of the bride, or that it might not know, which is the maiden name of the mother of a child that's baptized. Might not know. Um, <coughs> <coughs> right, back to me list here <coughs> on that one. Too many of these up now. Uh, Emerald Ancestors is the other database with births, marriages, and deaths. And unlike, I don't think it's as good as Roots Ireland in any way, unlike Roots Ireland, where you pay per certificate, with Emerald Ancestors, you pay for a period of time three months, six months, or a year. I used to think that they gave you all the information if you did that, but they don't. They don't give you everything that's on a certificate. You have to send for a certificate. You find it, and it's another, what, £12? Something stupid. Right? It's a silly price. So Emerald Ancestors is only useful for one thing, I think, a, a detail that it gives that the other two don't always give, and that is the parish that people were, were 
more married or dated. And very often it's the parish, sometimes even retired. So it's worth having a wee look at, but it's not the best by any means. Church records. Now, there's not very many of them online, except the ones that Ruth Ireland has or Family Search has. But you will want to know what church records there ever were that are available. Because <coughs> you must be aware of the fact that um, the general Catholic records usually don't go back much more than 1850. Presbyterian records don't go back much further than 1830, usually. Church of Ireland records about 1800, usually. But there are exceptions to that. I was researching a Catholic family in Dundalk, Darver, or I should say, say Dundalk recently, and the Catholic Church they went to had records going back to 1770. That's, I mean, that's what, one, two, three, <laughs> three generations more I was able to go back to the In fact, Lifford. Catholic, the Catholic Church of Lifford also goes back to the 1790s. So you need to know whether the records are going to be there or not. Um, otherwise, it's a waste of time chasing them up if they're not there. The best place to look at that is here, church records at Croning. Not that they're going to give you the records themselves, but you've all seen this document. Right? It's at Croning. If you want, if you want to Google this, just put Church Records Brony, this is the document it will give you. And it has, as an index first, I don't know why, because everything is then arranged in alphabetical order anyway. Look, there they are, there's all the church. There's Balamone, Balamina, Valley Down, where's Balamina? <coughs> well, I wasn't called back, the parish was called something else. You told me anyway, so I'm not going to find it on the Balamina properly. Don't forget, another beauty on the internet. This thing up here. I, want to find something, right? Balamina, B-A-L-L-Y-M-E-N-A. -L -L there's 29, actually, but there's no lot of Balamina entries in here. And I can go down them one by one and click through them all. There we go, Balamina Congregational Church, Kirk and Riola, Balamina Methodist Circuit Church. Okay? They don't have any of those churches, but if you go back up to this one up above, there's what's available for this place called Valley Man and Scallion in County Louth. All they have are baptisms 1838 to 1881, marriages 1838 to 1880. That's it. Just at random anywhere else. There's a nice big one. First of all, the money. P for Presbyterian, M for Methodist, C for Church of Ireland. Not Roman Catholic, right? First of all, the money. Oh, baptisms from 1751 to 1771. Not great. Very old baptisms for a Presbyterian church. Now, tough. <laughs> if yours are between 1870, 1771 and 1817, you're not going to find them. But, have I made the point that um, no point in chasing after church records if they don't exist, rather than go to the church and ask if they exist? Here's another very, very important point. <clears throat> the more of us get into genealogy, the less willing clergymen are to accommodate you. They are sick to the teeth of people turning up at their door and demanding, am I right? I want to see those church records. <coughs> or even thing I do, sort of crawl up in your belly and say, you need to me, do you think you might, I'll come any time you like, I'll come back any time you like to see the church records. And I'll give you 20 pounds of the organ uh, fund as well. That's how I tend to approach church ministers and you do get more cooperation from them, especially the money. They remember, the next time you go back, I always give them 20 pounds or 20 euros, one or the other. Um, but they're getting more and more sick of it and I'm getting more and more embarrassed them back to ones that I use over and over again. Well, I just can't really. <coughs> but some of them can be very curmudgeonly. And they can say, their private records, sorry, not going to look at them. They're private. People don't want you to see them. And admittedly, there are some things, some ministers in the past did write some very nasty words for illegitimate children. They didn't mince their words. You've seen it? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there are some sensitive things in these registers. People are wrong dead, usually. Um, <coughs> Dean Hay, a very, very nice man, oh, which I retired now, before Cathedral, one time allowed me to see the church records. They put pieces of paper over the other ones above and below so that I wouldn't see the other ones. And I said, you know, Dean Hay, if I went up to the public records office in Belfast, and this was before they moved, um, <laughs> Some things didn't improve from the public records office in Belfast. 
If I walk to a public records office in Belfast, I'll have this in a, a microfilm reader and there's a wee green button on it. I'll just press that wee green button and I'll get a photocopy of that page, not just the record I want, but all the ones that want to Now, I don't know whether they believed me at the time, but the next time I went back, he didn't bother with the two bits of paper. He'd obviously checked up. But you know yourselves, because I think you've been in the public records of, office uh, recently, and is it a hassle or is it not a hassle to get a <coughs> record of any, um, you know, it's when you're looking at the church records and microphone there and you find somebody that you want and you want to keep that record, what would you do normally? You'd pull out your camera, pssst, pick, there you go, these, these things here are brilliant, far better than my 500 pound SLR, I take far better pictures and you can take you know, a hundred of them just in a second. And they don't have to have a flash on, so you're not disturbing anybody else. They're silent, don't even click. But you're not allowed to do it with that. You have to take it off, go down to the one at the end. You're all looking at me as if you don't know this. That's true. You have to take it off, you have to go down to the one at the end, you put it on there, have to find it all over again, wherever it was, in that place, and then you have to go, oh, you have to walk about 100 yards to get a card. To put it into the machine to get it to work. You put the card into the machine, you press the button, and it comes out black. You can't read it at all. You see nothing. Now, I met a lady woman who was out there, I had lived here, and she was very helpful. She took me six copies of the until she got one that was. It wasn't as readable as a picture is. So, you know. It's all to do with copyright, I think. I don't know why it's to do with it. I really don't. Um, <coughs> I really don't, but, but uh, <laughs> that is relevant to getting things on the internet. It's just one of the problems that I have with crony. It's much better than it used to be, but that's stupid, having to do that, whenever you take it to camera. Don't think anybody cares. <coughs> don't think the churches, most of the churches don't care. <coughs> Although I have been to churches where the minister, point blank, was a, was a priest, that's not far from here, eh? Matter of he refused point blank to let me see the records. He said, the Bishop of Derry has declared these records are private and we're not allowed to show them to you. End of story. Didn't get to see them. Now the people that I was researching were actually across two parishes, so around the one next door, less important than one, they were mainly in this one, but he refused to the police next door said, down have a look, sir. And so I went down, young man, typical, he was a young man. He left me all of the records, let me look at them many at all. And, and when it was finished, I said, thank you very much, Father, whatever his name was. And he said, you get what you wanted? And I said, well, I got some of it. I said, the ones I mainly wanted were next door. And in search of those barriers. And uh, he says, what? And I said, well, Father so so wouldn't let me look at them. And he just went. <laughs> <laughs> so when people tell you it's about copyright, I think they're just being promotional. I don't think it is. I don't think anybody cares. <clears throat> My point about this, remember, is that no point in searching for church records that aren't there. As far as I know, see this here, this is, uh, this is the microphone that you need to look up in Crony, and all of that will be in that microphone. So if those are in that microphone there, you know you can go and see them in Crony, which is probably the best place now rather than go to the church, because the ministers are joking, which they don't really want to be going to the church. So you know what is there. Some of them it says in local custody. Well, it's usually very, very little is in local custody. Usually whatever they have is in Prony. And some of you were telling me earlier on, sometimes the ones that are, have been filmed and put into Prony so long ago, they've actually lost the originals in the churches now. So Prony has more than the churches actually have. On the internet, again, you go and look and see what's available before you waste any of your time. Um, registry office, births, marriages and deaths. This is their public <coughs> version one, isn't it? Uh, as far as I know, because that's the only one I use. Uh, they've changed it recently. Um, and an oddity, if you want to uh, get, the, get the record sent to you from the General Registry Office, which is no longer in Dublin but is in Roscommon, if you want to get it sent to you uh, electronically um, by, excuse me, by computer, they charge you 20 euros. If you want them to sit down, go and find the books, copy it out onto a piece of paper, uh, put it into an envelope, pick the envelope, put a stamp on it and send it off to you, it costs you four euros. Where's the sense in that? Don't know. 
I just hope they don't change the four year old for the, uh, for the ones at the post office. Um, they're bound to be looking up at Belfast and thinking, hey, hang on a minute here, we're the ones that are bankrupt. I heard we turned to 12 pounds for our certificates as well. Um, Tiny the problem books. If you're in the Republic of Ireland, don't bother with this because you're not. I don't think many of you are researching in the Republic of Ireland, but there are two databases. They give it out to two companies to do it. One was the Mormons and one was a private company. So it's on there twice and the Mormons one is much better. Again, um, <coughs> that's the two of them. Yeah, one's, that, the, one's the Mormon, one's the one is bad, the Mormon one, the lower one. Wills, crony wills, or just click on there. And Family Search has other wills. It has more wills than Prony because Prony only has the the three. This is interesting. It only has the three registration districts of Armagh, Belfast, and London Derry, right? And I thought, well, that will cover everything that I'm doing in Northern Ireland. When I was doing those few canons, I looked for kind of will ministers. They're bound to have left a will. Couldn't find it in Prony. And my partner Barbara in America, I said, There's no wills for these people, that's very strange. By you know, 10 minutes later, she's back with the will. She found it on Family Search because there's actually a third uh, place that you can register wills. It's called the Central District, as well as the three Armagh, Belfast, and London. There, there's the Central one, you can register it there as well, which, which is in Dublin, as far as I know. But these Presbyterian ministers from uh, London Derry had registered their wills in the central one in Dublin. So, you know, don't just look at crony wills. I find a lot of Irish uh, wills registered in England as well. Yep. I get very often away as soon as Right? Yeah. Yes. That would explain it then, really. And these men would have had, you know, the Presbyterian Church would have had links down in Dublin, no doubt. Old age pension census records. Uh -huh. The records themselves, oops, my favourite one, this is the Penn CR site. Now, anybody who's been on the internet a long time, if it comes up, will have heard of the Penn CR site, um, and it's just been updated, uh, made better, I can even say it's now, formerly Penn CR. And if you put the name of the person in there, um, which I say it was, um, I bet if I put this in here, it won't come up. First or second, Robert. Robert Brewster. Kind of. And you know, there. Search for ancestors. No, it does indeed. I'm not going to get anybody with that, am I? Robert. I don't really need to do it. <coughs> the point is that you, you're searching an index here. If you find the person you're looking for, it will be in a. It will be in a picture of the transcription from those big folders that I was telling you about, but you can't see the picture because it's too small. <laughs> you have to pay, I think it's only, it's quite, it's only two pounds, I think it is. You have to pay your two pounds or two euros in order to actually see a picture that you can read. Believe me, I've tried downloading it on my computer and I haven't seen it. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's too pixelated, you can't see it. You get enough information to identify well, you will, uh, you will, but it's like any other transcription, it's not going to be as good as the original because these things, these, these were letters and they, the men who replied, they wrote all over them and they wrote all sorts of extra information that you didn't even ask for. Uh, parents married in such and such a date. Mine had that one as well. When my uh, great great grandparents were married, they actually had the date. Um, but, but, Oh, sorry, that's right. That's okay. Anybody else? Feel <laughs> they've had enough income too. Can I, can I just say at this minute now that this here will all be on the DVD uh -huh. and we can, for a very small fee, make contact with the society and you can have a copy on this.
Good. 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 I get a complimentary coffee. You won't need yes. <laughs> a freebie. <laughs> Listen, I'll, 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 I'll take this. I haven't forgotten you much. What are we doing today? Okay. Ten to nine. That is only last week. Ten to nine. There's more you can find. I talk when I get the show. I'll go very quickly then, because you want to see how to use roots here. All right. Um, there's a. The only census fragment left that's worth anything is the one for, for uh, London Dairy and some Bill, you know Bill McAfee? Yes, yes. Yeah, Bill McAfee's website. Bill McAfee was my tutor at the New University, New University of Ulster when I was uh, at the University of Ulster back in the 1970s and he's still keeping busy. Uh, Townland maps, extremely important if you are researching, I can go forever, there's just so much to say. If you're using um, the Griff's valuation, and you zoom in on those maps, sometimes it doesn't go to your townland at all. You know the maps I'm talking about? Yeah. You zoom in, it doesn't go to your townland. Oh, <laughs> very, sometimes it might not even be the same county. I, I, I was researching once in, once in uh, Derry, when I was county in London Derry, and they moved to Corkshaw Foyle, and they were done go. The red, the red thing was. So, and if you're not familiar, it's okay if you know the area, yeah. but if you're not familiar with it, don't know where the townlands are, you need maps of townlands. <laughs> now, um, Donegal as well served a beautiful town now, maps for Donegal. County Stone was done by a woman from New Zealand as well as there. County Derry wasn't done at all, but I did it by getting them for somebody else. So they're off on Deborah Boyd's website for County Derry. I don't think they're on for County Adam either. And I'm not sure where you would get them. But <coughs> if you're ever doing uh, town now, maps into Rowan, Donegal, because I believe some of you do have ancestors in Donegal, you see them both actually maps. Absolutely beautiful. We can see by my kids' maps. And they come off for me at all. They're coming up, no. I'll go back to them and another. There they are now. No. Let me see. Look at that. So where's my parents? Uh Tavoin. Right, that's right, uh Tavoin there. Very good, I mean. Tavoin. And it comes up with the dam. Not beautiful. Mm. Hey? You can see, there's, there's, alphabetically, you can see them over here. So if you're looking for yours and you can just find one that you do know and then move about, absolutely beautiful maps. Down now, maps are extremely useful, and I have it on here as well. What else have I got? Down now, maps. Uh, county websites. Um, county websites are websites that collect information, all sorts of genealogical information, um, and sometimes there are things on there that aren't anywhere else. There's my own. County website, Wrestle for Genealogy. <coughs> Comes up, I had one earlier. That's not it. That's it, Wrestle for Genealogy. We'll move on beyond Wrestle for now. Oh, I forgot to show you this, Mary. I forgot to show them. You didn't remind me. You remember the boy Gray thing? Right? Yeah. This, Mary says she did right, so it's not her fault. Right? November meeting of the Balamina branch of the Northern Ireland Family Society will have a talk given by Mr. Boyd Gray, retired teacher and now genealogy consultant. Why Mr. Boyd specializes in? <laughs> 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 All the time. <laughs> I'm sure I'm used to it. Uh, <clears throat> so, here's the. I've got a book that's on mine, but they're a bit outdated now. The best thing is the the videos down here, County to Rhone Ireland videos. And these are the videos that I'm telling you about. <coughs> there they are there. So that's me doing videos on all sorts of different aspects of genealogy. And you just click on there and the video pops up from YouTube. It's on YouTube. Okay? So they're all there as well. So that you don't have to remember everything I've said here tonight. It's all there. I wish I had more time to spend on family history software. Um, because I heard uh, various people talking about the different programs that are available, and a lot of you use Family Tree Maker, um, and I think this Family Tree Maker is nowhere near as useful as GenoPro. This is my Family Tree website here, um, and here's the beauty of it. You see that? See that people there? Now you can't do this in Family Tree Maker or any of the online ones, as far as I know. See these people here. These boys from Drum Croon. I spent ages trying to find out who my Mary Boyd was related to in 
south of the continent of North Africa, do we? And I never found it. I spent six months researching it. And I found lots of families who could be related to her, but I never made a definitive link. So I want to keep all of those families. And there's one of them there. They're not linked. You see, there's no link into mine. But if I ever find where the link is, I can add it very quickly. I can, I, I'm not sure do you know, but I can make the link. You can put people onto your family tree and family tree maker um, unless they're linked into it. They have to be linked into it. Otherwise, you have to do another tree. So you have, I mean, I have about 50 groups like that on my tree, sitting roughly in the right place, just waiting to be linked in to GenoPro whenever I find the link. 50 trees. Am I going to produce 50 trees? A family tree maker? No way. Not only that, the family tree maker and all the rest of them have all of the names in serried ranks. Oh, don't they? They're all in serried ranks. They're all level. This here has them in chronological order, top to bottom, so that Sarah is lower than Nancy because Sarah is younger. They're all chronological. So when I put somebody new on there, right click, new male, put them on there, put their details, put the birth on, I put them in the right spot, and then I can decide, is this boy likely to be a brother of that one, or a brother or a son of that one, depending on where he is on my tree. GenoPro, I could spend a whole lesson, a whole session just showing you how useful GenoPro is, and of course one other thing about GenoPro, although I think you can do this in most of the others as well, is if you double click on any of these people, there's all the information I know about them. And if I find more information, such as I'm going to show you in a minute now, we're going on to Roots Ireland, more information on Roots Ireland, I just copy and paste it in there. It's there instantly. Copy and paste it into there and save it, and it's saved, and it's there forever. No bother. So when I don't have to think, oh, I can't be bothered copying all of that out, and then you forget something, I'll copy everything, even repeat things all over the place. Because if you found these people in the census, not that they're old enough to be in the census, but if you found them in the census, would you put the census details in under him or her or if all the children were there under all the children? Well, you wouldn't be bothered copying it out if you had to do it manually. So I just copy and paste it under everybody. Um, <coughs> right, I better get on now to. I think that's everything that's on there, more or less. This one here, being the best use of Roots Ireland, tells you, explains in detail how to use it. Alright? Read it at your leisure. It's explaining everything that I'm going to be talking about now. This one. is doing it practically. So, if we start off with <coughs> National Archives. Right? Search the census. I'm going to get rid of a lot of these things here because they're getting in my way. Close all the windows. Um, close, all, and close all of these and then open up the one once again. Just that one there. Okay. <coughs> this was an exercise that I once did for another another group that actually took it. Somebody was researching at the time and showed how to use Roots Ireland. By Ellen Blackwood, who was a person granny in the 1901 census that I was doing. So we went to the census, 1901 census. All right. Click for 1901. Put Blackwood in there. B L A C K W O O D. Ellen. Always got a problem with the name Ellen. E L L E N E L E N E L E A N O R E. Or you put ten different spellings of Ellen. Luckily, it was the obvious one. And it's County Donegal. Less is more. That's all the one. you they were well into Donegal. Sometimes if you're in the board in Donegal, they could be born in Derry. But I knew these ones weren't. So we look for the 1901 census and there was this man's granny. He was in one of my classes one time. Ellen Blackwood. <coughs> there she is there, Ellen. There's the father and mother. He knew that his great grandfather was called Richard Blackwood. I don't think he knew about the James. He knew his great grandmother was Mary Blackwood didn't know what her maiden name was. Don't forget when you're on the census is to click this button here so that you get all the information that's available to you. Also, if you don't trust what you're reading and it's frequently wrong, don't forget you can go down here, click on there, 
and you get the actual census itself. There it is there, so you can read it for yourself. Okay. Which is important sometimes. Um, click this again to get that information back. Ellen was 11. The parents tell us that they were 39 and 42. You will all know that everybody told lies about their age in the 1901 census and told the truth in the 1911 census because there was a great wave of religious fervor in between times and people didn't tell lies anymore. No. <laughs> they all wanted their pensions and you had to be 70. So suddenly they remembered that. I've seen the, the biggest I've seen is age in 30 years and 10 years. So I don't believe what they say here. But however, what we can guess is that Fanny was born, and if she's the oldest child, and she is likely to be the oldest child, if she's uh, 15 years old, they're probably married 16 years. Right? They're probably married 16 years. In which case, 16 from 1901 is 1885. <coughs> however, luckily, and I'll just change this to the 1901 census and the 1911 census. Ireland, 1911 census, Ireland, that's not it, that's it there, National Archives, search the 1911 census, and I'm going to search for Richard um, Blackwood, the great grandfather, because any of those women could be married 10 years later, if I get anything at all. <coughs> Well, isn't it, I'll let it find itself. You know, you probably all know that the 1911 census does say how long people were married, so you don't have to start guessing from the oldest child. And as it turned out in this particular instance, I was spot on. They were married in 1885. Um, so it's come up yet now. Any more than that. And did you notice, by the way, there was only one Ellen Blackwood in the entire county Donegal? English name, Donegal, you're not going to get many of them. So less is more. Don't start trying to go downtown now. <coughs> Castle Ray, I bet there's more than one way to spell Castle Ray. There he is, Richard Blackwood. Um, click that one, and this time he will tell us how long he's married. Married 26 years. 26 from 1911 to 1885. So actually, I was right. Uh, from my guest previously. So, let's look at this again. Find the father and grandma in 1901, Richard and Mary. Find them again in 1911, and uh, find when the parents were married, 26 years in 1911, 1885. Use IFHF marriages to find Mary's maiden name. Right, here's the magic wand coming up. <clears throat> okay, IFHF, Roots Ireland. You can abbreviate to IFHF because that's the property name for the Irish Family History Foundation. I've already got the details there, so I'll to click on to it. And we'll look for marriage, right? Click on the marriages. Incidentally, look at this 40% off all the records to the 4th of December. Now that means that they are normally 4 euros, so they're down to about Four years of the 350s are about 2 and 2 and 50. So they're very cheap at the moment. <clears throat> and what do you do? I'm looking for the maiden name of the spouse of Richard Blackwood. So if I put his name in here, no, I'll leave the first two blank. Right? Leaving the first two blank. Because it's her maiden name I want. I'll put his name in. L A C K W O O D. Richard. R I C H A R whoops. A R D. I know the marriage was in 1885, but just in case, you know, when you calculate years back and forwards, you can lose a year here and there. 26 might be 1884, or it might be 1886. So I'll give myself a couple of years leeway, but with a name like Richard Blackwood and in Donegal, I really don't mean to, because it's such an unusual name. And search. Have we got. A Richard Blackwood, who is a spouse marrying around 1885 in Donegal. <coughs> oh, we got two Richard Blackwoods, have we? What have we got? 
church marriage and a civil marriage. See them there? Sorry, you're not. Two, two matches. Right? There's two matches. So that looks like there's two rigid blackboards, but there isn't. There's only one. I can look at this for free. Right? I'm not looking at the record, I'm just looking at the match. Okay? marriage and a civil marriage. So they've got the church record and the civil record, so they have both of them. But there's the maiden name of Mary that we wanted to find out. And how did we do it? By not putting anything in there, but by putting his name in there. Now how valuable is that detail? <coughs> is that I don't know what the eh? No, if I put Richard Blackwood in there, all I'll get is Richard Blackwood, church, church, civil, Richard Blackwood, Richard Blackwood, 1885, and tell me nothing. You see what I mean? It only gives the top name. It's only going to give the top name. So you have to put the, the spouse, the other person, into the third and fourth boxes. You all follow it, right? Yeah. So how valuable is that? How much would you have paid to find that out? Order the church record, or order the civil record from uh, Groney and pay £12. Or, or you'd have to subscribe to Emerald and you would only, well, you'd have to Mm -hmm. Would you get that information? Yeah, you would indeed. They may not have it anyway. But Emma would give you the wife, if that's true. Wouldn't it? Um, but they have paid nothing for it. Um, because you only pay for the uh, certificates that, that you actually buy from them. <laughs> you see how many free pages I've got to look at? You get free pages when you put money in. You can go there and search immediately. But you won't have any free pages until. No, you get a hundred. That's not right. You get a hundred free looks. This is called a free look. It's not the certificate. It's a free look. And you get a hundred free looks just whenever you go there in the first place, and then you get more free looks every time you buy a certificate. So you never use them all. I mean, I've got upwards of a thousand at times. I just never use them um, because they just give you so many. So I'm getting all of these free looks, so I can get all of this free information. <coughs> the only time I pay is if I actually click here to view the certificate. And print it. No, I have to view it first of all, and then you can print it. I can print it afterwards, but I need to view it. Uh, I, can, I can then pay me money, four euros or, or two euros, fifty as it is at the minute, and actually see the entire certificate. When I will see one or two details that you can't drag out of Roots Ireland, such as the townland. There's no way I can get the townland. And if I want to know what townland they're in, then I would need to pay for the certificate. If I wanted to know the witnesses, I would need to pay for the certificate, and witnesses can be important. But really, the most important thing you want here was the wife's name, wasn't it? So now you've got the whole extra family, the McKinleys, to research from that area around Donegal. An entire extra family, which is on here. Right, see it there, but make it bigger. There's Richard Blackwood, and there's Mary McKinley. You see everything that's on here? There's Mary McKinley's father was John McKinley. I found using Roots Ireland that didn't pay for any of it. Because here's another thing we can do, right? I'll put her name in here now, McKinley. M-C-K-I-M-L-E-Y or Y-A-Y-L-A-Y. It's actually not spelling sensitive for that top box. Don't know why it's spelling sensitive for the ones down below. Not spelling sensitive. As long as you get it nearly right, McKinley. Uh, and I'll put Mary in there as well. Now, First, if you go further down here, father's surname, father's first name. Right? Well, we know that the father's surname is McKinley. But I wonder what his first name would have been. We can guess. And if we guess right, it'll tell us that we've guessed right. So all of a sudden we know his name. Now, you might think to yourself, well, there's an awful lot of first names to be guessing. But there isn't. In the 19th century, I would say 90% of Protestants were called... John, James, Andrew, Samuel, uh, Thomas, and William. We're all called that, aren't they? Like half of them are called James, I think. And then for Catholics, if you throw in Patrick and Joseph and Francis, you've, you know, take out maybe Samuel um, and Andrew, you've covered them all. So you don't have an awful lot of guessing to do, really. So I always start with James, John, and Joseph, with a J here. 
trying to put my J in there and click search again. And look. Two. I've got the same two records again. You see if I put see if I decided to put an S in there for Samuel and click search. No record. So all of a sudden I know his name does begin with a J. Have I been anything yet? Not any. J. Right, let's try James then. James. Is our father named James? Oh, it's not James. Okay, not James. J O H M. Okay, John. There's the two matches again. So her father's name is John. I haven't paid anything yet. If it happened to John, I'm going to try Joseph. I would also try J N O. Don't forget that frequently church records, people writing church records, will abbreviate John to J N O, James to J A S. Um, so, we now know that his, her father's name is John, and if I want to find his father's name, all I have to do, I'm not doing it because I'm running out of time, I have to switch them around, I have to take the black wood from there and put it up here. Paste. Right? Richard in, R I C H A R D. Richard, should be back to the two now. The two. So I can start to guess his name as well. <coughs> now, why on earth they have down here on a marriage record, mother's surname and mother's Christian name? I have no idea, as you know as well as I do, that mother's. Oh, I discovered the answer to this recently. Some church records actually did write down the mother's name. And that's why they've got it there. Very rarely, but occasionally, church records did write down the mother's name and her maiden name. I discovered that only very recently, actually. I forgot about that. So it's not as stupid as it looks. <clears throat> right, so back to me thing again. And we have now got the parents of Richard, John, his, they're both called John, see that? Well, going back to Ellen. Births, okay? Births and baptisms. Ellen Blackwood. When was she born? What was it? 11 years old. She was born in 1890, is that right? So we put in here 1890. 1890 plus or minus a couple of years. We should get Ellen. There she is. All right, just check and make sure. Yeah, there's Ellen. Ooh, Ellen Mary. She two names. Um, <coughs> and we know, just to make absolutely sure, father's name Richard, right? Richard, mother's name Mary. Mary. Okay. Click again. Yep, there's the two records again, so it's still there. Now, here's another clever thing. Take out Ellen. Wonder did she have any brothers and sisters? Because now you're you're talking about your uh, grandparents, brothers and sisters. You might know them, you might not know them. If we were a generation further back. Your great grandparents, brothers and sisters, you probably don't know them. And as long as they're after 1864, they should be in there. They were born after 1864, and these people were born in the 1890s, so the generation before should be somewhere in the 1864s. So, put in here, Richard and Mary. Many children, oh, well, they didn't have them in 1890, did they? You so I've got to give a wee, right? You need to wait that, that. Exactly, spot on. So I'm going to wait it to 10 years on either side of 1890. Click search. Eight children. Well, at least four. Both birth and baptism are there. At least four anyway. But again, how much have we paid? Well, let's have a look at them. Let's see. Hey, nothing yet. Oh, they're already there. But, and in fact, John is doubled. There's two Johns. There's Ellen doubled. Hesse is only there once. Wesley is only there once. And Fanny is doubled. So in fact, there's five children. The why on earth Essie doesn't have a church record of why Wesley, more importantly, born in 1887, doesn't have a civil record, it's a bit of a mystery. Why did they not register Wesley? The good as only knows, but these things, you know, they didn't bother, <laughs> whatever, they forgot. My point is that by, we still have paid nothing and we now have not the entire family of Richard 
um, Blackwood and Mary what was her name, McAvoy. We haven't the entire family, but we certainly have five of the children. There may be more, but we have at least five, and we've paid off them. Yeah. So, and not only have we not paid anything, <coughs> but we haven't had to trawl through a microphone up in Belfast. We haven't had to go and beg a clergyman to look at them. And we haven't had to send off to Roscommon or Belfast and pay money for that. £12 or €4. Euros. We've got it for free in Roots Island. Um, but as I say, and, and you know, because they're so good, I'm very sympathetic to the Mormons as well because they give us so much free information. I won't hear about it, we're saying about them really. <coughs> and it's the same with Roots Island. I like to say that for the free information they give us, we will probably go and buy some of the certificates. If it's your great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, you want that certificate. It's a transcription, by the way. But even so, you want that certificate just to have it. And very often, if it's not a direct ancestor, you'll still want it. My McClements is Jenny McClements. They're never in the same townland twice for the ten children that they had because they were agricultural labourers who moved from farm to farm, year to year, depending on who employed them. So I want to know what town I'm going around. So I'll pay for the certificate to see the town. I'm supposed to have time for questions. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you have questions. You may be stunned by it all. For I have my family training on ancestry.com and I have tried to take yeah, it and I am finding it impossible at the moment. <coughs> Jeff, you can't, you can't, not as far as I know, I don't think you can actually because once you've given it to them, you have signed away your rights to it, it becomes theirs. And, and In the past, I was able to do it two or three years ago, I can't do it now. I don't think they, I don't think they, you can do it. Well, the problem with ancestry.com is, as well as that, people will go along to your tree and they will add stuff onto your tree that isn't even right. So there's very often the information. Okay? Eh? You can make it public or can make it private. Well, so can you at least make it private? Yeah, well, I, I, I can't answer that, I'm sorry. But I think they have copies of it because, you know the AGI? You ever heard of the AGI? International Genealogical Index which is a database made up of all sorts of information, including family trees, that have been given to the Mormons in the past. Now you can delete, you can delete your tree as many times as you like, and look, if you delete it out of that ITA database, all the data that you put in there will still be in it, including uh, the libraries of people to it, so the, 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 the wives and the parents will then click onto them, and you can go to all the information that you want to put in there. Even the tree in. So, uh, hopefully if you don't have any questions, or if you're thinking, well, I've been here for a few hours now, and it's like time to go away, <coughs> and that fellow's throat must be very sore, which it is. Don't forget, you've got those live links there. <laughs> you already know you know the roots there, and that's great as well. And don't forget, there's also the videos there, which, see what I just showed you there now, is on what number eight, I think, in one of those videos, it's there. Alright? They're very, very good. The mailing lists, I did, and we took it, referred to them very briefly. There's, a, there's, a, there's at least two lists for every county, and I'm in all the relevant ones that I'm searching, and I give help to people on there. Yeah, and other, other people do as well. They're very, very good. And you see, they have the Julie Rutherford, lovely people, who work very hard on this. What do you think I say after that? You've covered everything. And Tommy will be pleased you've given him so much free information. Free? Free? Is that word? Yeah. Not again, again. He'll not be out for the rest of the week, my brother. No, 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 no. So, may I, on your behalf, thank Boyd once again for his information. Thank you. I like to, to spread it out and, and spread the word to everybody 
as far on as they can. So thank you very much for having me here. I enjoyed it too. Folks, keep in mind we are going to ask every library mission and the library completely free. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.